Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome to our course Cross Culture Communication. And today we will discuss about current literature and prevailing concepts related to cross culture communication. So, first of all, the thing that we need to discuss here the type of culture. How many types of culture are there? There are mainly there are two types of culture surface culture and deep culture. A culture is presented in many forms, some tangible and some intangible. Tangible means we can understand, we can see, we can observe easily, we can touch, we can hear the things that are called tangible. And intangible that are not visible easily and we have to take time to understand the things, we have to interact with the, uh, other people to understand those values and concepts that are intangible. So surface culture is also called objective culture, that is clear cut, that is uh, that we are seeing, we are observing the things, that exactly the things are in this way. And to describe the tangible aspects of culture such as people, buildings, objects, art, dances, music, songs, food, dress, language, behavior, actions and gestures and a lot of any other things we can include in this surface culture that is that we can observe when we interact with other people, we can interact with um, people of other communities or other societies and we can observe all these things apparently without paying too much uh, effort. So these are the surface cultures apparently and it's called that it's only 10% then the things that we can see according to this theory surface culture and deep culture surface culture consists of only 10% of the culture when whereas the right uh, rest of the 90% is involved in deep culture so let's go on Surface culture and deep culture theory, it was uh, given by Edward T. Hall and here we can see an uh, iceberg, is, uh, image of iceberg you can see here and the uh, upper part and the surface level that is visible that is only very uh, little one uh, as compared to the lower part or upper part or surface part, is a, this is called 10% of the culture that is surface culture and that is objective culture and that is visible easily understandable easily that is understood or you can see the things for example here you can see the example food clothing music holidays language religion and dresses and other visible signs of culture deep culture or it's called implicit culture whereas surface culture is called explicit explicit means visible or without any ambiguity or understandable whereas deep culture be implicit hidden culture that is not visible that is not understandable easily for example values beliefs behavior ethics communication space beauty time so we can understand that, that mainly there are two types of culture surface culture and deep culture surface culture is called objective culture also and the deep culture is called subjective the deep culture is also called subjective culture, it refers to the intangible aspects of culture such as feeling, emotions, values, attitudes, norms and beliefs <coughs> of other people. We cannot understand easily what sort of feelings a person with whom we are talking about, we are interacting at this time, we cannot understand until we have spent a lot of time and until we have to give a lot of uh, effort or we have to ask from that particular person then can we we will be able to know about the feelings of other person or likewise emotions or values or any attitudes and beliefs so the deep culture is hidden and difficult to see at the surface level and yet it is what primarily determines how the people behave and communicate with each other and how we interpret our experiences the iceberg model of culture resembles a culture where the tip of the iceberg floating above the water as we have seen in the image about 10% was floating on the surface. So 10% 10, 10 or of the tip of the iceberg that is uh, consisted of 10%. It's floating above the water represents the surface culture which is about 10% and while 90% of the mass of the iceberg is 
hidden below the surface and thus invisible, representing the T culture. Deep levels of communication may not be explored in the workplace environment because that examination might lead to an inter interrogation to of one's belief in the value system. And yet unless we examine our own deep roots of culture that shape our beliefs and values, we cannot begin to make sense of the world around us. However, there are some other notions about the types of culture uh, apart from the two types of culture surface culture or deep culture there are some other notions according to this those notions there are three types of iceberg concept of culture there are three types of culture surface culture shallow culture and deep culture and surface culture as we have discussed already the things that are visible the things that are easily understandable and uh, we can uh, we can know by watching by observing the things that what they exactly the things are and the deep search culture values beliefs norms and feelings and emotions whereas the middle part of the uh, this uh, model we can see shallow culture that is not too much deep, that are not too much on the surface level, in the middle way. We can understand there are some things that we can understand, like communication. Sometimes we feel that communication must be, communication knowledge must be come in the surface culture, in communication knowledge. Sometimes we feel that it must be come in the deep culture. However, we can infer that communication or these sorts of things we can include in the shallow culture. We have spent some time, a little amount of time when we spend with other people, we can know and we can see the things that in what way we, the other person is having, what sort of these things. So they are surface culture and deep culture. There is a middle way then when we do not pay too much attention, too much struggle, or too much time, we can observe the things with it, uh, spending a little amount of time. Or uh, some things that when we observe the things not very minutely, not very deeply, we observe the things, but after some time we can understand what sort of those things are, what those sorts of those culture are. So here are a lot of examples you can see over there. Next, there are some concepts related to intercultural communication and these concepts help us to understand <coughs> the, <coughs> the context of uh, different communities or to help us to, uh, in related to our interaction with other people. So here we can see some concepts. First of all, is the mental models and stereotypes. Next, prejudice and discrimination, cultural identity and worldview, deep structure of culture, religion, family, and history that have played a vital role in regards to the intercultural communication or cross cultural communication. So, number one is their mental models and stereotypes. When we are confronted with people from diverse culture, from different culture, we immediately activate our mental models and begin our mental processing of stereotypes. Mental models allow people to reference stereotypes that have been stored in their subconscious. I could suggest that uh, we use mental models to confirm our biases and use them as layers of inference. These layers of inference are based on the stereotypes that we embrace and these stereotypes are pervasive and powerful examples of mental models in our society. For example, when we encounter a person by the way the person is talking, by the way the person is dressing, by the way the person is eating, we, we become judgmental immediately. So, because he or she is behaving in this way, so that's, that, that person is not very good, that person is very proud, that person is very uh, arrogant, and that person is because he or she is not showing uh, some other personality traits. So, we say that uh, if we encounter an introvert person, we say that very innocent person or very naive or simpleton so we make our judgment or we become judgmental very quickly and very immediately we give them sorry we give comments about other people 
although the things that we are watching, although the things that we are observing at that time are not sufficient to make judgment about other people. So mental models or stereotypes mean we have some sort of knowledge about other communities and when we encounter and when we spend a few time or when we you know, encounter very few time we make judgments about other people in what way that person would be or in what way that person would be behave so these are the mental models walton described stereotype concept he said that it's a pictures in our heads in our pictures in our minds and whitely and kite define stereotype as beliefs and opinions about the characteristics attitudes and behaviors of member of various groups thus a stereotype is a standardized mental picture held in common by individuals of a social group based on oversimplified opinions and incorrect and uncritical judgment Our memory and our experience in a particular context such as influences of mass media, schools, families, peers play an important role in forming such as stereotypic mental pictures. Stereotype can never be completely accurate because they are often based on some kernel of truth that has become simplified and generalized due to such factors as racism, ethnocentrism, historical events and imagination or fabrication. So these are the things, the stereotypes, the concepts which is our, uh, what we develop in our mind, in our heads. The judgments that based on uh, not uh, accurate knowledge that is not based on accurate knowledge or uh, correct information. We have some sort of knowledge and we see the things and we become very quickly, we become judgmental. We make uh, predictions, some sort of, we can say that person must be in this way and that person in, he, in that way. So I can remember here, I want to give you some one example of my own life. It was a long time ago, I met a teacher and she told me about her school principals. There was a new school principal came that time and she was telling me about her new school principal and she was, she told me that in the way she holds or she catch, caught the pen from my hand, I concluded that the lady was very cunning. So how we are very quick in making our judgmental, in what way, how, how we can become judgmental, the way a person is holding a pen or snatching a pen or catching a pen. We cannot, we must not be so judgmental or we must not be so quick or immediate in this making judgments about other people. So stereotypes we can, you can also think about some other examples when we encounter other people. And being a Pakistani community, we are very quick. We are very quick in this process to making judgments about other people without having you know, solid knowledge or without having a, a accurate information. So we must avoid this stereotype or mental models. Since stereotypes are often based on outward appearance, meaning is generated on the basis of visible data alone. Visible data do not only include skin color but may also include nonverbal communication such as posture, gestures, facial expressions, or body language. So how you say something or for example is you your accent. So sometimes people become prejudiced in the way a person is talking, in the way the person is saying something or accent or pronunciation or the vocabulary or the facial uh, features or so, um, sorry facial gestures or body language became people become judgmental on the basis of these things we use our stored information that we, we can say that these are the um, surface culture so stereotypes are made or mental models are made on the uh, surface culture 
on the basis of surface culture that we don't have much knowledge but just we see the things we become judgmental we observe the things we examine the things then we start our evaluation so in this way that way the person will be or behaving in this in that way we use our stored information together with the visible data selectively but at a rapid space rapid pace immediately very quickly or very immediately we become judgmental almost in the blink of an eye we use stereotypical descriptions and make judgments based on our mental models so the stereotypes and mental models that we have made in our mind or in our head on the on the basis of surface level of uh, information or surface level of culture so these uh, stereotypes and mental models have positive and negative effects if we have made positive stereotypes mean we we have made some good predictions or we have made some good stereotypes about other people we have give good models good mental models of other people so it means we are promoting and we are giving the good image of uh, those people uh, when while we are uh, staying in our community or when we are staying abroad we we will promote that mental models or stereotypes by giving their examples to other people that they, because they are very simple they are very good nature nations so we will admiring them we will praising them everywhere when we are if we have made negative stereotypes so it will give a negative impact of that particular community members about whom we have made those predictions of those mental models and stereotypes so during my stay in malaysia that i have observed that the people of uh, india people belong to india they are to some extent they are sharp but i didn't be, make make these predictions or this mental model stereotypes on the very in, on the very beginning at the very beginning of uh, my interaction interacting with those people but with the passage of time as i continued my interaction with those people there were some indian ladies so i also found that no they are very sincere no they are very very dedicated they were very dedicated to their studies they were dedicated to their friends their close friends and so i changed my mind because they are not very cunning and they are not, not very sharp they are very good they are very good friends even so i changed my mind so about uh, about malaysian people i made that they are very simple they are always they are very honest and always they are fair in their dealings and with the passage of time with five years time i observed them so i found and i this notion was confirmed with the passage of time when i have spent time with them in, in while interacting with them i confirm the uh, stereotypes that i have made in the start uh, of my stay over there so if we have make uh, some positive stereotypes in these positive stereotypes are confirmed then we are spreading that positive stereotypes to other people it means we are giving their good impression to other people and i can remember when i was uh, last time i went to their over in the what was the name of the bank bank islam i went over there to close my account so the person who was sitting over there on the counter uh, he asked me what is the reason why do you want to close your account from this i said that i have completed my phd i am i'm going back to my country so he said congratulations and gave uh, uh, nice words about us give nice words about uh, us to your people tell them about us so i said yes sure yes i have observed i have observed practically that really it is very nice nation very simple and very hard working very sincere in each and everything that i have observed i will tell them so these are the stereotypes a positive and negative effects that we can see while interacting with other people next there is a prejudice and discrimination stereotypes are used as shortcut to make generalization of the characteristics of a social group whereas prejudice expresses unfavorable attitude towards the social group and its members prejudice is unfair 
irrational and adverse feelings based on preconceived judgments and an attitude of hostility or enmity directed against an individual or group without any gro grounds without any basic grounds they develop these uh, hostility feelings or attitudes towards or uh, towards other people or towards other people of the other communities prejudice therefore involves effect or emotion when person feels when thinking about uh, interacting with being members of other group so there's a stereotypes or prejudice prejudice is unfavorable attitudes or really it's not stereotype can be accepted because there are some positive stereotypes also but prejudice cannot be accepted in any society at any level by in any circumstances so prejudice we must avoid prejudice we can become stereotype but there must be positive stereotypes rather than negative stereotypes prejudice is associated with discrimination discrimination makes a distinction in favor of or against in individual or group based on stereotypes of the group class categories the dark side or negative part of discrimination is prejudice so prejudice and discrimination before can create communication barriers leading to racism that person is belong that person belong to another sect or that person is belong to other nationality or that person is belong to other ethnic group so we create discrimination and that's not fair by substance and stereotypes are regarded as truth and reality and may exist in schools hospitals workplace and international relationships so we can say that the perception that we have made about you know, other people or stereotypes they are to some extent they are on the basis of truth and reality because there are some observation and they are made or they are made on the basis of some ob sort of observations examining the other things so we can uh, discriminate between prejudice and stereotype next there is cultural identity and worldviews religion provides an insight into the practices of culture often mass media and social networks focus on differences among the various religions of the world however they urge us to consider similarities among religions and to address commonality among world religions such as sacred scriptures authority ritual ethics and sacred time although these are the different things that <coughs> we have uh, different islamic preach our islamic preachings are different from hindu preaching or hindu uh, scriptures or hindu authorities or christian authorities or rituals or ethics in sacred time for example sacred time and for ourselves being muslims we have um, friday is a sacred time or when we are performing our hajj or umrah we are on sacred time we are spending our sacred time for christians and there is the sunday church or sunday pray they think that it's um, when they are in the church and they are praying on sunday this is sacred time for them and like my authority for example we have authority as a muhammad peace be upon him he is our prophet and he's the last prophet and he the preaching or teachings given by him we have to follow and we consider Holy Prophet Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as authority. Likewise, Christians they consider the authority of uh, Jesus and Mary. So that's why we Hazrat Maryam Al Islam and Hazrat Isa Al Islam, as we can say in Urdu. So there are some different rituals, but they say there are some commonality. These are the sacred things. because these are the second things for hindu these are the second things for muslims these are the second things for christianity so we must give them respect to all the other religions or the, to the things related to all other religions so although media is giving us the notion that these are the differences and there are some sort of differences between the uh, among these religions but also they give us the commonality among world religions so for example overall we are being a being a human we all are in the relation of sister and brothers we all are have have relationship 
with, with, with ourselves being um, offspring of Hazrat Adam and Islam. So these are the things we must consider in this way. However, there are some cases, individuals and groups react emotionally and this may or may not lead to more violent actions. In the later half of the 20th century, the media reported a diverse range of worldviews representing ethnocentric perspectives that resulted in either violent or non-violent reactions around the world. You can see an image of Dr. Mark Lament Hill. <coughs> Dr. Mark Dr. Mark Lemmons Hill, an award-winning journalist and professor of media at Tampa University in the United States, was fired by CNN from his role as a political commentator after he gave passionate speech on Palestinian rights at the United Nations on the International Day of Solidarity with the Palestinian people and uh, 17th uh, anniversary of the Declaration of Human Rights. In his speech, Hill criticized Israel's state violence and his ethnic cleansing of Palestinians and supported the Palestinian call for a boycott on Israel. And so that's why he was terminated from his uh, job as a political commentator by CNN channel. Apart from this, Pope Benedict cited the 14th century Byzantine emperor who equated, equated Islam with violence, means Islam is equal to violence, or Islam is a religion of violence, causing deep felt resentment among the people's Muslim population. The Muslim population became furious on, this, on his remark about Islam. Chavez called Bush the devil and won the admiration of the non-Western world, while at the same time falling further out of favor with the USA and her allies. An MP in, in New Zealand said that women with burqas and gay community were problematic in New Zealand society. So yeah, these, these prejudiced remarks about the Muslim women or Muslim ladies and gay community. In the 21st century, there are increasing media reports of this trend in Europe and the UK. In the UK, for example, there is a move to ban hijabs and niqabs from the public schools. France has been thrown by a bitter debate over whether Muslim girls should be allowed to wear hijabs in public schools or the separation of religious and political activity has a long history in France going back to the French Revolution in 1780. Nine. Here you can see a um, piece of information that I got in by a newspaper. Muslim women in France face significant barriers to attending school, working in the public or private sector, swimming and now even, ever, even running. So they are not allowed to wear the dress they want to wear according to their religion, according to their sharia, or according to their um, uh, culture. So they are they have to face a lot of troubles if they perform these uh, code dress over there in the locality of France. Here, here, is an, uh, here you can see another example. The school girl seen leaving a college in Abervillers, a town north of Paris, puts on a headscarf which announces her religious affiliation with Islam and she was not allowed to attend college anymore because of wearing a headscarf. So she is leaving. Another figure, anti-Islam figure, we can see that uh, we came to know by media is the Islamic Islamophobia or Islamophobe Dutch MP cancels offensive cartoon contest. You, you can see the figure, it is the gear builders who has announced the contest. 2018, a cartoon contest about Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So he was condemned, and he there was a lot, lot of uh, strikes or protest over there by being done by the Muslims. So finally, he has to stop this cartoon contest, and he cancelled this. So we can see in what way the media is presenting, especially when we observe the things, and these are the. In most of the cases, these are anti-Islams, and the media promote anti-Islams activities done by other people or non-believers or non-Muslims. The derogatory or insulting label Negro or Nigger that is offensive to uh, African American or African and Arabic speaking communities who have a history associated with the label Kuli that is offensive to South Asian, South African and Chinese communities also are less productive. These sorts of labelization that, uh, uh, that fixed with the, some 
group of people so they don't like to be called by that not like african people they don't like to be called by the, this word by this label negro or in urdu we say habshi or this is uh, nigar although they are belong to the that saying uh, tribal areas or we can call them they are they become offensive when we say them negro because it's uh, related to black skin or black color of the skin so they become offensive they become furious when we call them negro so these are the other some liberalization that we create when we fix with the other community members of the other people next there is the role of religion family and history Samuel and Potter identified three important deep rooted structures that shape our world view namely religion family and history they claim that perception is learned through culture and it's used selectively in the form of beliefs and values beliefs are deeply embedded and remain unquestioned they also claim cultural values define what is worthwhile to die for so they are interpretation if a person who is practicing islam or a person who is uh, practicing christian belief or christianity or an other individual who is performing is um, or is uh, exercising in the hindu religion there are some different claims or different interpretations that we can see by um, performing their religious activities so there are some interpretation different interpretation and explanation that are done by the members of different people so these our beliefs and values they determine what way a person will be a, a person will behave our part in what way a person will exercise his religion exercise the activities of his religion family as a deep structure family transmits not only culture but also in identity this means that family not only helps you to define social skills or occupations or professions of your ancestors or forefathers or a particular difference other social roles or gender roles you know in what way a female members of that family are performing or male members of that family particular family are performing and respect for age in context of the respect for the elders or respect or affection and love for the younger one in what way they also if these things also shape who you are this gave us your identity and especially when we when you want uh, when a person want, wants to get married so first of all he or she is concerned with this thing they they must be khandani people khandani log hone chahiye so why we say this one and why we prefer khandani log or khandani people means they are people of etiquette they are people of civilization and they are very well mannered people they will not deceive to any other person and they are very truthful people so these are the these are the what we say these are some special concepts about uh, families that in our mind that they are very good so these are the speciality of these families that pre this uh, that fix with those people many cultures have deeply entrenched beliefs and values about family so some there are some religious family and they regards their religions a lot in their lives and they perform their religious activities at any cost and they do not miss anything similar family values are embedded by diverse cultures so there are some similar family values may it could be uh, for example in muslim community we give them must uh, respect to honor honor for the ladies or respect on there are some other in some other diverse culture we can also see that these uh, values respect for the ladies we can find out although this uh, concept is different as compared to uk or us or western countries but in majority countries or majority families or of the different cultures we can find out these similar values that are very dear to us and they are very uh, valuable for other people of difference 
uh, diverse cultures same values led by the performed by the different cultures can also be observed Sajumun agrees that value placed on family is often a major point of comparison across culture, particularly in collective cultures. Chinese, South Asian, Asian, Latin American, Mediterranean, European, and African cultures are examples of cultures in which family, survival, harmony, and honor is extremely important. And I have given you an example already about the honor of the ladies or respect for ladies. So it's important to recognize that these deep family bonds among many world cultures and to note that maintaining family honor, for instance, may drive family members to kill or to be killed. For example, in our context, in our Asian context or Pakistani context, especially uh, a person who violates the family honor or who violates the respect of the family, that person may be killed or um, executed by other family members because of this violation because of the this respect or honor of the family is very very dear for the family members for the whole family members so uh, as the um, consequences of violation of the family honor the other person may be hostile or even so they kill the that particular person who is the cause of the violation of the family honor in other words sacrificing a life for family honor may not be ruled out as an option strict adherence and compliance with the religious and cultural practices might urge family members to take extreme measures to defend family for example, a medieval Europe women had to protect their virginity and chastity through chastity belt compliance, which was an important Christian cultural practice. In Muslim cultures, virginity among unmarried women is the basis of a family honor in addition to that. Next, history as deep structure. History explains and describes the main features of a culture. It provides specific details and events that shape the individual identity this is the history of muslims this is the hindu history or this is the christian history of christian people so what makes you who you are and what shapes your role in a society is the result of where you place as was history and is today the events you experienced and the actions you will take to reclaim that history will contribute to and shape this that history to your children will call their own so at this time the present time what you are practicing what you are giving your practice in what way this time will become the past when it will become the past and in, it will become the history of your next generation or your children and they will tell us in that way well, the, those were our forefathers that were very very brave and that were very very valor and that were very warrior for example in Rajput in the history of Rajput people they say proudly to their children that we, we were very strong and we were very brave people even Mughal emperors were terrified and scared because of our strength so this uh, the current situation of your it will become the past and the history of your generations religion as a deep culture it is the chinese philosophical view that people in this world should live in harmony uh, harmonious living or in spite of cultural religious social and political differences to be achieved through mutual understanding respect and cooperation cultural insensitivity and understanding hold great potential for world peace and harmony practical particularly in plural society plural society mean uh, where the, a society where different sects of people or people belong to different religion exist or stay over there in a one as a one community this is often demonstrated among muslims hindus and christian in trinidad and tobago who participate in each other festivals and religious events making it truly a rainbow country as noted by dashman tattoo and nelson mandela who refer to the south african community as a rainbow nation the unique embracing of muslims by the local community is particularly significant in the post 9 11 period as it is serves to relieve tensions and hostilities towards the entire muslim community so as end of our today's lecture